Welcome to Little Wars TV. My name is Dave and I'm here with Miles and we're going to talk to you today about Flames of War version 4. Uh, published in 2019, uh, the author is Phil Yates and the company is Battlefront Miniatures. Uh, this is the fourth edition of the game. I've actually owned and played version 1, 2, 3, and 4, so I guess that makes me an expert. Guilty also. Yep. The rules cover 15 millimeter World War II company sized actions and we will judge it on five categories. The first category is presentation. Uh, as you saw, Miles was brilliantly holding oh, up sorry. this book. Uh, it's a hardback copy. Uh, it's 117 pages long, full color, beautifully put together. Lots of diagrams, charts, everything you could ask for in a rule set. Uh, they also have a lovely A5 version of the rules. It's easy to carry around and it's, it's pretty much free when you buy a starter box or an army box, which makes it great for new players. Uh, there's a great set of uh, QRFs that summarize the rules. Uh, one of the big changes in, in kind of the rule presentation is the introduction of unit cards, uh, which as an old line Flames of War player, I, I scoffed at. These kids today who don't have to walk to <laughs> school in the snow both ways, uphill. Uh, the unit cards are great. They really streamline the play and actually make the game much more accessible to new players. And I think that's something we'll probably talk about at a number of points about how this is a great kind of platform for bringing people into the hobby. Oh, definitely. Um, we kind of assume that everybody knows World War II uh, because we are historians, mm -hmm. but not everyone who's going to pick this game up is as familiar right. with a Panzer IV versus a Panther. And the cards clearly show you this is the tank and this is what it does and that's what it looks like on the table. For presentation, uh, I love it. I gave it a 9. Um, honestly, the only reason I didn't give it a 10 is I'm a little jaded because previous rule sets had lots of typos. Uh, this one does not have as many typos, but that was the only thing that kept me from giving it a 10. Uh, I gave it a 9 also. Uh, I, I think it's, it's wonderfully presented. I think they do a fabulous job uh, writing it. There are still a few typos. Alright, our next category is playability. I think the way I would describe playability for Flames of War is it always gives me a good game. Um, but it's a game that's designed for head-to-head -head play. When you look at how the scenarios are designed in the back of the book, uh, the pointing system, this is a game that is designed around tournament play. You don't have to play in tournaments, but everything in the book is oriented towards that, where you have a group of 100 points versus a group of 100 points on the table. Uh, there's not a lot of scenario uh, uh, details where you might have one side. You have to do that yourself. Um, I find the gameplay is actually quite a lot easier in this version versus past version. They've done an immense uh, job of streamlining the game, mm -hmm. uh, which I actually find uh, uh, great, which makes it easier to get a game done in, in a couple hours as opposed to four or five hours when I first started playing the game. Right. Well, to those points, um, I would have to say that you know what you might criticize the game on is also maybe a strength. Um, you know, this is a game that's built to be played on a four by six board. Yep. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't have the benefit of having large games tables and you've got everything geared for a 4x6 pickup game where you can mm -hmm. tell someone hey I'm coming we're gonna play 100 points 100 points both build an army and have a great game mm -hmm. yeah and, and unlike the, la the previous versions where it was a bit of a memory contest if you could memorize all of the different minor adjustments for your different rules uh, how you allocated it a lot of that has been streamlined out of this game which again it makes a much better playing experience and I think also makes it a much easier game to bring people into the hobby because it's so well presented what you need what you need to get done right. uh, and, and that's something I think is you know sadly lacking in a lot of other products on, on the market right now well when you talk about bringing more people into the game um, in, in version four, the entire first section of the book is a quick start section. Yeah. So if you're new to gaming, you literally can read you know, 10 pages and you can play a basic game mm -hmm. and get started right yeah. away. One of the other benefits for playability is basing. Uh, the rules use a very specific basing for the size of infantry and gun teams. And although that might be seeming like a detriment, it's actually an advantage because you know that anyone who is playing these rules is going to have their figures based the same exact way right. you are. 
and the bases are provided. Whenever you buy miniatures from Battlefront, they give you the proper number and size of bases that you need to play. So I, I thought that that was a real yeah. advantage. And uh, the other thing that they've done, and, and it's not necessarily attached directly to the rules, but Battlefront has spent a lot of time and a lot of money bringing a lot of plastics to the market, mm -hmm. which I think lowers the price of the vehicles and yeah. the infantry, which when you're talking about bringing new players in makes the game more approachable, easier to purchase. Um, and again, when you buy their stuff, you get the bases and you get decals, you get everything that you need a, as a starting yeah. player. Yeah. So for playability, what did you give it? Uh, I gave it a seven. Uh, I actually was very generous. I gave it a nine. I think for what it does, it does a great job. I agree. Uh, our third category is mechanics. Uh, one of the things about the mechanics of this rule, uh, of these rules that I, I like, is the fact that they're intuitive. They're, they're simple, they're intuitive, and once you actually learn the rules, you literally can play the game just using that two-sided quick right. reference sheet, which yeah. I think is good. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I like it. It's an I go, you go game. Correct. Um, so there's limited uh, chances for interrupts from ambushes. There is an ambush rule, uh, but it is a much more traditional game. Again, one that I think is well suited to bring people into the hobby with. Uh, I think in terms of some of the changes, the, the game has been streamlined from earlier versions of Flames of War, really complicated things. I, after playing years, I still really didn't understand. Hit allocation has been simplified. Uh, I think uh, the, the mechanics for tanks are quite elegant uh, and give you a good feel of how a Stuart would, would do against a Panther or a Panther against a Joseph Stalin. That feel and the tank statistics actually make a lot of intuitive sense to me. Uh, and, and so I enjoy that aspect of the game. Uh, artillery uh, is very effective against infantry. Not nearly as effective as it used to be against uh, tanks in the previous versions. So again, I think the artillery mechanics work really well. The only thing I'd probably like to see is some form of command friction. Uh, units do exactly what you want to do in this game, uh, and, and so I can't, when I do something stupid, I can't blame it on the rules, it's me. Yeah, and I agree, the, the command mechanism, you, your troops are always going to do what you want them to do. It might not be smart, but they'll always do what you want them to do. Uh, the one change that they have for this uh, version is the command distances, mm -hmm. uh, and so when you're playing the game, for the most part, the command distances are about six inches. Uh, for larger units, they'll give you a little bit more room, they'll give you eight inches. But what that causes on the battlefield is tremendous amounts of clumping, and you end up with tanks literally parked next to each other, which isn't really realistic. As far as morale goes, you're going to find that there are both platoon morale checks to be made and company morale checks to be made. Uh, everything is D6, so when you're talking about a D6 game, there isn't a whole lot of latitude one way or another, whether you're talking about shooting or whether you're talking about morale. Uh, the one thing about version four is that you don't have to take a morale test for an infantry unit until it gets down to two stands. And that seems great, but the problem is that when you're starting with a unit that has 28 stands, right. it gives you a lot more staying power before you ever have to make that first check. And in these rules, if you have two Tigers or any, two of anything, as soon as that one is bailed out or is, is dead, you're making a test for that survivor. Right. And it's not gonna stick around very long. No, and if it's a Tiger, that's a big little group of points to leave. Excellent. Um, so, as far as your score, what did you give it? I gave it a seven. I gave it an eight. Next, I'm seeing a trend here. Um, the fourth category is historical flavor. It's weighted 20%. Uh, and I would actually say that uh, Flames of War is a, gives you a bit of a bland view of World War II. It's a game system that attempts to do the entire war in all the phases and all the theaters. Mm -hmm. And so it has a grand scope. Uh, I think it does a good job simulating it. But it's not, if I, if I really wanted to do an Eastern Front set of rules, I might not pick it. If I really wanted to do a North Africa set of rules, I might not pick it. That's all I want to do. If I want to do a World War II set of rules, I would pick this. Okay. Uh, I, on the other hand, rated, we're going to rate it a little bit higher, I know. Uh, when they first came out with version 4, they realized that a lot of people already had collections. And so one of the things that they did was they released this Fortress Europe book. And the Fortress Europe book 
is a little bland. Uh, it, it gives you basic lists for, for the various nations that mm -hmm. are involved. Uh, and when you look at it, it, it it's very generic. Right. Uh, but the thing that they are doing is they're releasing books for all of the different countries and they are doing them by theater. Uh, so the American book is already out for Normandy and the German book is coming out pretty much as we speak. Uh, and I think those go a long way to addressing your concerns. Um, they, they really do give you a lot of options and when you combine them with the command cards, uh, they allow you to build very specific units. And, and one of the things I like about Flames of War, as far as the historical nature of it is, it is a tournament game system, but I, I see it as a toolbox. Um, they really do give you all of the things that you need, and if you have the historical knowledge, you can build a force that is 100% historically correct, and you can build scenarios. Well, you, you can do historical scenarios yeah. that aren't 100 points versus 100 points, right. and, and, and the game actually, you've got all the tools to do that. Uh, and that's where the unit cards actually are hugely helpful yeah. with the little, the small adjustment cards you can add on top of that. Uh, so, but that requires some additional work from the player. You're not going to get that from Battlefront, at least from, from the current set of products that are available. Now, if I was going to ding it on anything in the historical flavor, I would look more to how the battle plays out. Mm -hmm. um, I, for one, feel that, for instance, the artillery on the table is not really realistic. Uh, the fact that there's no overwatch and that you could literally skip from one piece of train to another piece of train and I would never get a chance to shoot yep. at you. As a rule set, you know, it, it allows you to do historical things and it, it does reward you for doing those historical mm -hmm. things, but it also leaves a lot of leeway for you to do very ahistorical things and get away with it. Yep. What did you rate it for historical flavor? Um, I actually gave it a seven. Excellent. I gave it a six, so I think we're right on top of one. Another. Right. The last category that we have is support. Uh, and I have to say that Battlefront, for the most part, does a fantastic job supporting their products. Um, I originally was very sad when they closed down their forum on their mm -hmm. old website, and I know they closed it down for a variety of reasons, but I, I really felt that that community kind of took a hit as a result right. of that. Um, but into that void, they have filled things like Facebook, Instagram, and, and a huge variety of third-party uh, websites that have actually kind of picked up that old forum uh, that was now missing. Um, if you look at other things, uh, they've got a fairly steady release schedule. Uh, they're releasing new books um, or re-releasing new books uh, and either releasing new tanks and infantry in plastic or they are releasing uh, old models that they've yeah. either just reboxed or whatever. So they have a constant stream of product coming out, which I think is great. Uh, they do have an FAQ uh, that Phil Yates puts together and along with the rest of the guys from Battlefront. I think another thing they have is they do have an online uh, list builder. Uh, now you got to pay a little extra right. to, to access that. It's, it's not a material amount of money. Uh, I find it quite good. Now I used to use another uh, freeish one back in the day that I liked a lot. Uh, that was less expensive, but I think it's there. Uh, the website is superb. There is an immense amount of content on there. Right. I think they could do with a little bit better indexing to make it easier to find. Um, you know, I do miss the forum. The forum was a great way to ask questions. But I also understand why I go away, because there are some toxic elements in the forum. And, and, and Battlefront, one thing they have learned is they know how to put together and market a game. They've watched a lot of the right. other competitors in the industry, and they, they've taken their practices, whether it's what GW does with Warhammer, whether it's Fantasy Flight does with some of the card-driven games they have. They're taking a lot of those elements and trying to bring them to historical games, and then I think they're actually pulling yeah. it off pretty well. I can't disagree with anything that you said. Uh, excellent. Um, so I gave it a nine for support. Uh, I gave it a nine also for support. So now we come to the end. Uh, Flames of War for me has one thing that you have to keep in the back of your mind. It's a game. It's not a simulation. And I think it does a great job at what it sets out to do. Uh, the people at Battlefront really wanted to take historical gaming and bring it to the masses, people that normally play things like Warhammer. Mm -hmm. And 
I think they've done a, a really great job of doing it. Uh, they put out a great product. Um, some people complain that the game isn't complicated enough, that there aren't, aren't the little bells and whistles, but it's not what they set out to do. They set out to, to build a game that you know the average 15-year-old kid can play mm -hmm. and old people like myself can play. Even old people like me. There you go. Um, the rule book itself retails for $25, which I think is a great price yeah. point for a hardback, full color book like this. And even if you can't afford this, if you're buying a starter army, they're gonna give you this little free one. Cards, you're looking at 10 bucks. Um, so yeah, um, by the time you buy an American book, a rule book, some cards, you know, you're over 50 bucks. Yeah, if you wanted to do two, two, two armies, uh, um. you gotta buy a core rule book, you've gotta buy at least two army books, the Fortress Europe book you can get, but it is a little bland. Yeah. yeah, I think you're looking at 100 bucks in books to really do it right. Right. Um, but for a hobby, you spend hours and hours in doing it. I don't think that's cost prohibitive, but it's not the cheapest way to do it. Uh, but again, they also do a superb job with uh, pre-made armies in a box that you get, that you get everything you need, uh, that make it easier for people to get. I came into the hot historical hobby uh, playing Flames of War. It was my first historical game. Uh, and I found it, you know, when I first started, astonishingly confusing with scales and all mm -hmm. the different rules. And then I stumbled on what Battlefront had done, and, and they're doing it even better now. Yeah. And, and so as, as, as once one wants to see the hobby grow, I really think would applaud them for the approach they're taking. And, now and I think that point that you just made, Miles, is important to remember that, that when you look at what they've been able to do with historical gaming, I wish every time period mm -hmm. had a company like Battlefront out there that would actually bring it to the masses like they did, because I, I do. I think they've done a great job. So I guess my total score uh, was a 72, which is still uh, quite high. Yeah, and my total score is an 86. He likes it a lot. I still do. Now you know our views on Flames of War. I'll be honest, it's a pretty controversial topic if you have controversial topics in, in, in historical gaming. We'd love to hear your views. If you've got a different opinion or agree, please give us the comments. Please be professional. Don't, don't, it's not a flamed war. Uh, sometimes it surprises me the uh, level of vitriol that can exist for what is a pushing toy soldiers across the table. Uh, but we'd love to hear your opinions, so please go to www.littlewarstvs.com.